Well, today on the bench, we have an Ego 56 volt, 5 amp hour battery. And I've been wanting to take apart a 5.0 battery for a while. I do have one, and it's new enough that I haven't had any issues with it. But I did buy this one um, off eBay as a non-working unit. So I just thought I'd give it a shot. I got a lot of curiosities about the 5.0. I've taken most of the screws out of this. I'm going to finish. Taking the last two screws completely loose. And we do see that right off, uh, this battery does not have a BMS issue. It appears as in a previous video I did of the 2.5 amp hour. But very interesting. The BMS does seem to be the same board, which makes sense. You're still checking your cells and series. It's just two of them in parallel together with each 14 set. 14S steel. I already taken these four uh, screws out. They're also T T15 security screws, just like the previous uh, Ego disassembly. So, not wasting much time with that. I'm trying to get right into it. And it is a beast. It's, it's not nearly um, as big as the 7.5 amp hour naturally, but nevertheless, a lot bigger than the 2.5. So, we do see. It's pretty much like I thought. We do have our 28 cells all together. We do have our, our parallel set. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's also seven parallel sets here. And then those two pair will be in series all the way through to give us our total of uh, you know five amp hour at our 56 volt fully charged. And one thing uh, I think I failed to mention on the video before I took it apart, I have a meter over, and that looks discouraging because I'm getting zero volts. So if these if these cells at all went to zero, that would be really really bad. To have 28 cells completely probably useless. But it is a gamble when you buy something not working uh, just for repair. I always enjoy looking at the things and seeing what's different about them. So I did take the risk and spent about 50 to 60 bucks on this battery. So I was at least hoping to salvage some good sales. I wanted to learn a lot because I still hadn't seen anybody post information about a five amp hour. And uh, people ask questions all the time about the two and a half amp hour battery I repaired a couple years ago. And they ask about their 5.0 or the seven and a half amp hour battery. And unfortunately, I just tell them that I don't have experience. I just tell them what I've had with the two and a half and try to help the community all we can. But we see here that like I had made a few comments about in the previous videos, you know, it, it may be similar. It looks like it is very similar. And I know this is still an older version of the Ego battery, which right now be the ones giving you trouble if you did have issues. The newer battery packs Ego makes has a different power management, I believe in the indicator that actually does now show you different levels of uh, your power level, which is great. But as we check this battery, of course we had zero volts at our terminal, but we do know that the BMS shows like it's a charged battery with at least, uh, you know, some percentage above 25% remain in charge on the battery. So the good thing is we know that the battery power is getting to the BMS board. And we see that coming off the pack itself, we're getting about 51 volts. So that is awesome. This battery has not went down really low. And uh, at a quick glance here, we do see what could be stopping it getting from this point up to our terminal. And this is uh, what they're calling F1. It is a PCB tray style fuse. And I don't know what it was rated at. I'm assuming 40, 50 amps, but I could be totally wrong. If we own across here, we're getting nothing. So we, we can see a little bit about the trace width from a little bit of the trace that's left here. Probably about a five or six millimeter trace. And the thickness might be a little bit harder to gauge because I don't know how much of that may have, may have let go. I'm going to dig around here and try to get to a pad here where it's soldered to. And the other thing is we actually have some vias here and some vias under here. So I'm not 100% sure that's not adding to the capacity. If this is a front and I'm not sure this is a top and bottom thing or the V's are just there to uh, to help with the current capacity of the 
of the trace itself instead of just the fuse. But I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pause the video and clean this up a little bit and re be right back. I got the soldering iron heating up. I'm gonna try to pop this little PCB fuse off. Back now with this cleaned up a little, I'm gonna try to put some rosin flux on here and hit it with my Avon iron. I might have to actually go and get my 200 my 200 watt iron to, to get this off. It is a, a good bit of mass here on this connector the substrate, the um, the vias. It's wanting to walk, that ain't too bad. A little bit more flux here. Rosin flux does help a lot. Helps transfer the heat a lot quicker. And there we go, we are off. And it is just a one-sided foil, it looks like. So it is just that one trace that was doing our current protection. So I measured about 0.2 millimeter by five or six millimeter, but it's hard to gauge by what's left. This it's definitely thin and it's definitely um neck down a little bit. I could take apart my newer pack or my um my good pack, get a little bit better idea, but regardless, I'm really not gonna have one. And there's no detail on the board. Shame on your ego. Okay, so after the video. I got to thinking about it and I said, well, it's worth taking apart my other battery. I'm just so curious about that fuse and um, all it actually says is 5.0 millimeter. So it does not actually have the current rating on it. But anyway, we looked inside to check, do a verify. And um, it's also good while I got it open, I guess, to, to look at these uh, state or phase change material sleeves. And if you can tell none of them have melted or anything, they still have the sharp edge. So I hadn't overheated the pack at all. I've used this one for probably two years now, so that's a good thing. Just checking it out before I put it back together, but I just thought we'd look at that fuse and uh, see if it had a rating, but no luck. Just worthy of noting, this is a repair board that I had from a uh, 2.5 amp hours of spare that I kept the connector and all, and this is actually a 3.0 millimeter. So this is a three millimeter trace for the 2.5 amp hour. So the lower capacity pack does have a, a lower rating on the fuse, which makes sense. But I think what I'm going to do for testing and charging and see if it'll work, I have a 30 amp miniature automotive fuse. And I think I'm going to put it across here and solder it in. I think it's actually, um, it's going to work out good and it's going to be fine sitting in here as far as uh, out of the way. And I can just put some silicone over it. We'll just see how that goes. I would have rather it been a 40 or 50 amp because I believe this pack's gonna have that higher capacity. Got the rest of that trace off. So with nothing else, temporary fix. We have a 30 amp fuse soldered in. So if we check now, we're definitely getting our 51 volts through our fuse. So what I'm gonna do as a temporary measure is just put some Kapton tape on here before I silicone it all up. So I did have to slightly bend the fuse at an angle just to make sure it don't touch, you know, and eventually break the solder joint by touching too hard. So that slid in there nicely. I'm just going to put a few screws in it and we'll try it out. So that's got two screws here and just one here, just to get it together for testing. I'll test it in the tool first and then I'll put it in the charger and make sure it charges up.
fully charged. So we're back now with the pack fully charged. Right at 58 volts. And we got lucky the sales were balanced pretty well. I don't think we had any sale damage. The only issue I might have is that 30 amp fuse doesn't hold up well under a load. I might have to step it up. And I might actually have to order something because when you go up to 40, 50, even 60 amps, that's the only size I currently have or the only physical size protection of that uh, amperage rating that I have currently. So if I have any issues after I get around my chainsaw, I'll post it in the comments below. I don't have anything to really uh, run the chainsaw with right now to put a good load on it. So I run it for a few minutes with the blower. Everything seems good. You know, one thing I thought was very interesting, I've been wanting to do a 5.0 amp hour video for a while and just now getting around to getting my hands on one and doing it. And just so happened this morning before I got to post the video, we had a comment from a, I might mess your name up, but Sylvain. And he, uh, he commented on the 2.5 amp hour video, the repair video. And he was saying that he had trouble with a 6 amp hour battery. And he followed the troubleshooting and his Q12 was shorted. was indeed faulty. And he also had some trouble with some uh, resistors on the other side of the board. So that also confirms uh, that the larger batteries are real similar with the BMS as the 2.5 amp hour that I had previously repaired. So thanks for your comment. And uh, you might want to look at the comments also and, and see if you see any updated information. And the community just helps a lot. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people that's uh, posted on there. and Some have uh, repaired different issues. So, so keep that in mind as you look through the comments. Sometimes it's worth your while if you're having some issues. So if you got a little bit out of this video on this 5.0 amp hour Ego 56 volt battery, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.